Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Kishore Manaholi and we will study the histopathology of Kimura disease. A 39-year-old Japanese man presented with an enlarged lymph node in the cervical region. And besides lymphadenopathy, he has no other symptoms. Lymph node biopsy shows expansion of the paracortex along with the presence of secondary follicles. Follicular lysis is noted at some places. Immunohistochemistry shows a mixture of CD3 plus T cells and CD20 plus B cells, which is the following is the best diagnosis. HIV lymphadenopathy, Kikuchi Fujimoto disease, Kimura disease, Rosai Dorfman disease, or Castleman disease. The correct answer is Kimura disease. Now, by definition, Kimura disease is a benign condition. It's a chronic inflammatory disorder of unknown etiology with an indolent clinical course. Indolent means it's a slow clinical course. It's characterized by eosinophilic infiltrates forming microabscesses in the background. And the background is made up of polymorphous inflammatory cells. And the essential features of Kimura disease is that it predominantly affects young Asian males. It can involve nodal as well as external sites, but most commonly it affects the nodes in the skin, head and neck. The problem is that it sometimes recurs after surgery, so you need to have a follow-up. Now, we come back to the histopathology because we are concerned about how we will report a case of Kimura disease. So it's characterized by these features. Under low power or scanner view, you should be able to identify the presence of secondary follicles. Now, when we say secondary follicles, it means that they have active germinal centers like this. So what you see here is a dark area made up of the pantal zone and then a central pale area, which is an activated germinal center made up of B cells. Everything is made up of B cells. The center is made up of activated B cells. The mantle zone it consists of B cells, which are not activated. You can see a few primary follicles here and there where you don't have the pale central area. So the way to recognize a, a secondary follicle is by identifying the germinal center in a lymphoid follicle. The other feature is the expansion of the paracortex. Now, the paracortex is usually the home for T lymphocytes. And it is the interfollicular area. So, between two follicles, this is the interfollicular area. And that is called as the paracortex. So, this entire thing here is the paracortex. And you can see that it's expanded. This is not the usual size of a normal paracortex. The whole thing has been expanded. But here, in the case of Kimura disease, the paracortex is filled with eosinophils. Now you can see plenty of eosinophils here. The typical bilobed nucleus and the bright pink cytoplasm. And you can see plenty of those. They are ubiquitous in number. So the second feature is the presence of follicular lysis. Now, this, if you can appreciate, is an entire follicle, a part of the follicle. But the dark blue area, which is made up of a mantle zone, seems to have been cut off at this point. And you don't see the dark blue zone in the remainder of the right side of the image. And that's because the follicle has been lysed and it is being penetrated by these eosinophils that you see in the paracortex. So follicular lysis, um, breaching of the follicle and invasion by eosinophils is yet another important finding. This is yet another picture where it's even more clear. You can see that this is the mantle zone, the dark cells, the dark lymphocytes. You see the germinal center, the pale area. And then there is a breach in the mantle zone. The follicle has been lysed and they are being invaded by all these pink colored eosinophils. The whole paracortex is full of eosinophils 
and they are entering into the follicle. So this is yet another important feature. The presence of polykaryocytes of the warden finkel type, uh, these are basically giant cells with plenty of uh, nuclei, sometimes ranging up to 30 to 40 within a cell. So those types of giant cells, which are called as warden finkel cells, also known as polykaryocytes, are seen in a case of Kimura disease inside the germinal center. So symptomatically, we should know that they are characterized by a triad of symptoms. They present as painless subcutaneous masses in the head or neck region. There can be tissue and blood eosinophilia and there are raised levels of IgE. Now, this is how we report a case of humor disease. So this is a sample biopsy report. So classically, it's a lymph node and it's an excisional biopsy. We would give a diagnosis up front. We call it as a Kimura disease. And it's a section uh, in, in the comment section. We say that there are increased numbers of non-neoplastic secondary lymph follicles. It's important to mention secondary lymphoid follicles. And it's also very important to say that it's non-neoplastic. Then we talk of the paracortex. And we say that it is expanded by numerous eosinophils. We also mention microabscesses if there are foci of eosinophilic accumulations. And if there is follicular lysis, we mention that. Um, and they look exactly the way I showed you in the earlier histology slide. And if you are able to visualize the polykaryocytes of the warden finkel type, that too needs to be mentioned. Most importantly, at the end, you need to mention that there are no malignant cells of any type seen in the histologic sections. Thanks for watching.